please return to the dais. It is 530. Even if you are speaking with one of our esteemed former colleagues. <clears throat> okay, we have now reached 5.30 p.m. We go to public testimony. The rules for public testimony are on the screen or shortly will be <laughs> given our tech issues. And I ask that speaker be respectful of these rules. Please note that the board does not and will not take public comments on items related to personnel or individually named staff. Per board procedure 1430BP, we have increased the number of speakers this evening from 20 to 25 due to the number of testimony signups that exceed 35. We have 45 plus on the waiting list plus the 25 slots in order to allow more individuals an opportunity to speak. The majority of the speaker's time must be spent on the topic he or she has indicated when they called in they wish to speak about. I'd like to note that there is a two minute limit. When you are on your last 30 seconds, the yellow light will shine and you need to keep that in mind and wrap up. When the red light shines, please finish your sentence. Ms. Sheck will read off the testimony speakers. First up for public testimony, we have Miles Grant, followed by Alex Zimmerman, and then Alicia Taylor. Excuse me, I'm sorry. My script does not say what we have up here on the big screen. No racial slurs, personal in insults, ridicule, or threats will be tolerated and all signs brought to the meetings are subject to the same ground rules. Thank you. Okay, hello. Uh, hello, my name is Miles Grant and I am a Franklin Quaker. And that may mean something completely different to you than it does to me uh, because I am a member of Franklin's own Principal's Cabinet. Now, the Principal's Cabinet was created to make sure that every facet of Franklin High School was heard to the staff, to the teachers, to everybody that made decisions in the school, they could hear what the students were saying because that's who's being taught here. That's the future that's being created here. And we did that. And not only did we do that, but we went above and beyond having every voice heard. We planned events. We planned ceremonies to make sure that every single student at the school made sure that they felt welcome because that's important too, beyond the curriculum, beyond the school's policies, beyond that, it's, you have to make sure that every student feels welcome in the building. We also planned an event you may have heard of called Power Justice Freedom. That's an event that we hold every year to celebrate the social justice activism that happens around our building, that happens around our community, to bring people together underneath one large event. And that event, guest speakers, workshops, everything was student-led. And that was all st students. And really, that's what we stand for here at Franklin, is making sure that every voice can be heard, because when we all come together, to do great things, great things can happen. Thank you. Uh, 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 my name is Alex Zimmerman. I'm president of Stand Up America. Sieg Heil, my sweet, lovely figure. 
Führer, Führer, yeah, sweet, very sweet, uh, sugar, yeah, mm -hmm. a Nazi garbage rats from Animal Farm. Mm, I want to speak about agenda, what has happened my first last time. Guys, I, honestly, I love you. You did something that is very unique. You bring everything in Seattle under fascism control. I call this a Nazi, a commie Nazi fascism. It's exactly what's happened. I don't understand why you treat these people, these people like a slave. You understand why only 25 can speak when everybody has speaker. You forgot who you are. We elect you. You work for us. You are servant. That's exactly what's happened. And you acting like a Führer. You can make rules, what is you cannot change. Why you cannot change? We don't have constitution of US. We don't have constitution of state. We don't have open public meeting act. And why you treat these people like a second or third class citizen? And exactly because look who here, a homosexual, a woman, a minority. How is this possible? So people like you, you know, who belong to minority, bring fascism to life. I demand what is everybody will speak in 45 people too. Oh, why are you stopping? No, I have 25 seconds. Okay, I'm sorry. So this is exactly what is I repeat again and again. And I will come to every meeting right now. You ask to everybody, stand up America, clean this dory chamber from this crook who think in this ass master, ass Führer, us bosses, you work for us. Are you forgot about this freaking? Oh, I don't want. Thank you very much. After Alicia Taylor, we will have Eric Bishop, followed by Chris Jackins, and then Matthew Brewer. I'd like to cede my time to fellow parent Bob Ettinger. I am speaking in support of the Amplify Science curriculum as a parent of a first grader at Hawthorne Elementary School. I have substantial experience with science curricula and the next generation science standards. I was a middle school science teacher for eight years, including five years at Mercer Middle School. During this time, I was honored with multiple state and national awards for science teaching. Since then, I earned my doctorate in education leadership at Harvard and spent three years as the managing director of STEM for a network of schools in Washington, DC. I love Amplify because it is really good, fun science. For example, in a first grade lesson, students learn how animals can defend themselves by constructing models where they use toothpicks and plastic tokens to protect a soft clay body from the attacking teeth of a plastic comb. This hands-on activity is not an anomaly. The kindergarten and first grade units do not utilize digital tools at all, and grades two through five use them infrequently. The next generation science standards call for shifting the focus from learning about a topic to figuring out why or how something happens to motivate students to care about what they are learning. So instead of having a unit where students learn about phase changes in general, one middle school unit is centered on students figuring out why a methane lake on one of Saturn's moons called Titan has disappeared. They investigate using hands-on activities and also really powerful digital simulations where they design progressively more complex models for what happens to microscopic particles during phase changes. My son Roger is six years old and he loves figuring things out. He is always asking why. Amplify Science empowers and engages students to keep figuring out why. This is the science I want for Roger, all his classmates at Hawthorne, and all the children in Seattle. I hope you honor the recommendation of the parents and teachers on the Adoption Committee who voted to recommend Amplify for approval. Thank you. I'm here to support the work of the Science Adoption Committee, and I cede my time to Ruby Jabal. I teach at Dearborn Park International, a Title I school in the Southeast. In my school, our students are creative, bright, and eager to learn. They are primarily non-white, speak at least one language besides English at home, and are low income. My students, all students, deserve the best science education we can provide them. My families do not have the loudest voices. They do not complain often. They do not ask for much. They do not have schedules that afford them time and flexibility to attend school board meetings. They care deeply for their children and they trust that we are doing our best to provide them every opportunity for success possible. 
I view this trust as a responsibility and a privilege. I approach my work with a sense of urgency. My students must learn and grow and take pride in their developing understanding of the world every day. I joined the Science Curriculum Adoption Committee from the same sense of urgency. My students need a science curriculum that empowers and challenges them and their peers throughout the district. They deserve rigor, creativity, curiosity, and real world applications. They deserve to feel like they are dipping their toes into what science truly is. I experienced the integrity of the selection process firsthand, constantly mindful of how much responsibility we were given to complete this work and how far reaching our impact would be. We were thoughtful, intentional, and as scientific as possible in our work. Our process aligned perfectly with board policy 0030. We were and are committed to selecting a curriculum that would empower those who are disempowered, offering meaningful access and opportunities to students who have not received the science education they deserve. We thought about equity, true equity, at every turn. We considered the rigor of the material in all dimensions and looked at which curriculum would provide authentic opportunities. When it came time to select which curriculum I felt best met our criteria, I voted to honor my students, their families, my colleagues, and our entire community. I ask that you honor our work and our conclusions and support our students in having the curriculum that best meets their needs. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chris Jackins, Box 84063, Seattle 98124. On the science instructional materials adoption, five points. Number one, consider an example of scientific reasoning. In the TV show Let's Make a Deal, the aim is to find the top prize behind one of three doors. One door is opened, leaving the top prize behind the other two doors. At that point, should a cha player change their pick? One supposedly obvious answer is that it makes no difference. The right answer is that they should pick again. Number two, this example is subtle enough to sometimes give pause to experts. The board is empowered to give independent overview to curriculum adoptions rather than simply defer to experts. Number three, do you believe that parents can use the material to easily help children with their homework? Number four, I have concerns that using online material may be a fad. Darwin's book on the origin of species could be called out, a, out of date, but it is still a substantial text. Number five, I oppose any adoption that does not provide physical textbooks. On the grant to South Shore, five points. Number one, the grant agreement states that it is effective as of 2017, which you just passed it. Should that be 2019? Number two, a private foundation appears to be buying the right to help select the principal. Number three, the foundation appears to have a veto over the membership of a committee that visits the school. Number four, the foundation appears to have supported charter schools. Number five, is the board only pretending to oppose charter schools? Please vote now. It's too late, but you could change your mind. Thank you. After Matthew Brewer, we will have Emily Alasky, followed by Alexia Katsaroff, and then Julia Ward. Hi, Matthew Brewer, teacher at Washington Middle School, acting member of the Science Adoption Committee, and I cede the rest of my time to Sabrina Sly. Buenas tardes. My name is Sabrina Sly. I am a freshman at West Seattle High School. I am here to share my experience with Amplify Curriculum as a student at Denny International Middle School. I am a current member of the student student superintendent student advisory board and I'm here to support and I'm here supported by Spanish speaking parents from Denny. Amplify is a great science cur curriculum. It provides a highly organized system that helps students from different learning styles to understand and learn science. It provides reading materials and simulations that are fun and engaging but at the same time informative and it helps connect lessons to real life situations. It is a great way to learn how to use technology and all my classmates appreciated being able to learn in a modern way. One of my main career options is to be a scientist. Amplify has really pushed me to want to learn more in the science field. Regarding equity and the importance to make sure all students have access to science, Amplify provides that opportunity for everyone. 
I'm asking you to listen to students like me that have, experience, ha, that have the experience of using Amplify and to the great teachers that believe this is the best curriculum for us and our future. Please do the right thing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emily Lasky. This is my 11th year teaching at Asa Mercer International Middle School. I teach 7th and 8th grade science and CTE. A recent media story has called into question if the board was informed about the approval and use of Amplify Science waivers in SBS. Uh, in the fall of 2017, all the Amplify Science waivers approved by the superintendent were given to the board's CNI committee. When I started teaching in 2008, the science materials were obsolete and didn't align to all the standards at the time. We got new science standards. Um, the NGSS in 2013. I was horrified to hear from the district that there would not be a science adoption. In 2015, I went to OSPI to write items for the new state assessment. I came back dejected. The materials we had were not even close to meeting standard. The lack of technology in our school, and even if our materials were aligned to NGSS, our students would be unprepared to show what they know. In 2017, on the recommendation of my science department, our Mercer principal, Chris Carter, applied for an instructional waiver to use Amplify Science curriculum. The waiver was approved by the superintendent. Shortly thereafter, I stood before you with my principal and several students to urge you to approve a board action proposal for the purchase of instructional technology to support teaching and learning in core subjects. The board's approval of this proposal provided historically underserved students of color across the district with access to powerful electronic resources um, that support innovative science teaching and learning. Your decision provided for the first time in Seattle Public Schools equitable access to digital tools that will prepare students with the 21st century skills that they need to be successful and closing the opportunity gap for our district's most vulnerable students. In fact, the school board's own policy, number 2022, reinforces and underscores the importance and urgency of placing instructional technology in the hands of our students. This policy reads, the board believes that students need to be proficient users of information, media, and technology to succeed in a di digital world. Therefore, the district will use electronic resources as a powerful and compelling means for students to learn core subjects. When I heard last year that we were finally having Hi, my name is Dr. A.J. Katzeroff, and I'm going to cede my time to Hillary Nguyen. My name is Hillary Nguyen. I'm a senior at Franklin High School. I am currently taking three AP classes while juggling a part-time job, providing childcare for my family, and being active in my school's community. I cannot speak at the last board meeting because I was taking care of my nieces who attend Van Asselt Elementary School, and I want them to have the opportunity to learn science material that supports them in their academic growth and instead of material that their mom had learned in elementary school. Change should be made according to the recommendations of the Science Adoption Committee for grades K through 12 because the pathway to to science, educa science education in high school begins in elementary school where the students learn core material needed for science in high school and beyond. At Franklin, some of our teachers and peers were part of the adoption committee for grades 9 through 12 and recommended new curriculum aligned to best ways aligned best ways to engage my diverse classmates in learning science. As students, we prefer engaging activities that allow that connect us that connect the material to our own experiences, especially for elementary school students like my nieces. I have, I have experienced that when my science teachers follow a storyline when presenting new materials to us, they find ways to connect the material through phenomena, where, whether it is historical or something that occurs in our everyday lives. It is more engaging and fun to learn. Science is not just a bunch of concepts, but a way of understanding our lives, figuring out our figuring out our world and how new discoveries can lead to innovation and change. The adoption of new science curriculum is important not only for us at Franklin, but also our future students like my elementary school nieces. Just because my community looks different does not mean that we are not the same in valuing high quality science instruction. I know that our students are capable beings that can be pushed and when we are pushed, we can excel in not only our individual academic growth, but growth as, as a school and as a community. Please honor and respect the recommendations of all science adoption committees. Thank you. After Julia Ward, we will have Joshua Tashima Boyd, followed by Christine Benina, and then Melissa Westbrook. Hi. 
I'm Julia Ward, and I teach sixth grade at Jane Addams Middle School. And this is a floppy disk. Um, my students don't know what this is, um, and the only reason it ever comes up is because the save icon on the computer is drawn out like this, and it doesn't make any sense to them, but they memorize it so that they can save their work. Um, it doesn't make sense. Science and technology move awfully fast. NGSS is not just a new lingo for old science. It's a new way of thinking about how students learn and think scientifically. Seattle needs a science curriculum that can keep up, and Amplify is that curriculum. Amplify was written from the ground up to address the new standards. Our students are preparing for careers that don't even exist yet. Superficial updates to old textbooks just won't cut it. Online curriculum does not mean computers are teaching the class or students are constantly staring at screens. If this was a plug and play curriculum, none of these teachers would be here supporting it. They are here supporting it though, because Amplify is scientifically authentic and engaging curriculum. Online is good because it means Amplify can change in response to feedback from teachers and to keep up with the present. Families have asked, but what about hands-on activities? My kids want to dissect a frog or mix chemicals in test tubes. I share the belief that students learn by doing, but a hands-on abacus is not superior to a calculator. The simulations on Amplify are interactive. Students complete dozens of thoughtful investigations using computer simulations in less time and in more accurate ways than if they use tin foil and Bunsen burners. Guess who else uses software to conduct simulations? Professional scientists. I'm Joshua Tashima Boyd, and I'm a teacher at Franklin High School, and I want to talk about evidence and trust. We live in a society today where it's acceptable to ignore evidence, where people can believe the earth is flat, a 20-minute Google search is equivalent to a doctor's opinion, and where fear-mongering blogs can completely derail this adoption process. As science teachers, we are, familiar, we are the front line of combating this shift from evidence. So I feel it's important to say that this amendment is ignoring a lot of evidence. HMH scored slightly above Amplify in overall score for the first field test alone, but breaking down the actual data reveals why the adoption committee voted for Amplify instead. First of all, on the final rubric, uh, the summative assessment, if you will, Amplify scored higher in all three categories, review criteria, field test data, public feedback. HMH had strong evidence for only one out of 10 components for field test. Amplify had five. Amplify's student growth for far outstrips HMH. 23.8% higher growth for first grade and 42% higher growth for fourth grade. Compared to HMH, 10.4% more students felt like they could do science and Amplify, uh, with Amplify and teachers had a higher positive response. We, why are we discussing a curriculum that taught 42% less information? This brings me to my second point, trust. You all have said multiple times you, could wish, you, you wish you could be in the schools more often. You're not the ones teaching this content, having to pass the walkcast to graduate. You're not the ones in the classroom. So you have to trust those who are. The adoption committee has presented Amplify as the first choice because the data and evidence supports this as the best option for engagement, learning, and teaching. Not picking this option is saying that instead of trusting the analysis of the committee, you'd rather have our students using inferior curriculum that does not align with standards. Finally, screen time is a critical part of society, and digital simulations are extremely valuable in science education. Amplify has been mischaracterized as being computer-based. Trust that teachers know how to balance the active with the digital. This amendment shows no trust in the teachers, the non-biased adoption committee, nor in the teachers properly implementing screen time. Please focus on the evidence and approve the first and most supportive option for our students. I cede my time. Thank you, Christina. My name is Debbie Burmett, and I teach first grade at Sacagawea Elementary School. Five years ago, I was on the elementary math adoption committee, along with Director Burke. Mm. Our committee, like the current science adoption committee, was composed of a broad range of educators and community members. Together, we did a deep dive into the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics, which is the guiding framework for what students should learn. 
After much research, our committee recommended a curriculum that the school board declined to adopt. Instead, they chose a curriculum that is significantly out of alignment with the Common Core standards. The math department is caught in the middle of adhering to the school board decision and supporting teachers to do our job, which is to teach the Common Core. As a result, classroom teachers such as myself have been scrambling and piecemealing materials together to use. The results are that we have less time to polish our lessons and math instruction varies greatly from classroom to classroom across our district. Some PTAs in more affluent neighborhoods have funded new math materials for their students that are aligned with the Common Core. This creates a huge inequity. This disparity could and should have been avoided had the school board listened to the committee they commissioned to do the work of adopting math curriculum. I implore you not to repeat the mistake with the science adoption. Please listen to the professionals who are on the science adoption committee. They have done their homework and they are the experts. Thank you. After Melissa Westbrook, we will have Brad Shinaka, followed by Jen Fox, and then Lisa Boving. Good evening. Points to consider on the science adoption. You are not supposed to be curriculum experts. The hardworking people on the committees are. But your policies must be followed, and you should know all the costs if one curriculum is computer-based. I see in the bar that the numbers have already changed, and yet it isn't even highlighted so someone would know that it happened. Your own policy states that on adoptions, input should come from any form, and yet the committee only took input from their own online form. You know in, via your own emails and phone calls that there are many more people involved. I note that I am the co-chair of the Information Technology Advisory Committee, and we have never discussed the need for more computers for middle school. I have questioned why, though, at the almost the end of the school year, there are millions of dollars sitting there in the budget. Now I think I know why. How is it equitable to choose a mostly online curriculum for kids who may not have computers at home? As well, the FAQs say that better off PTAs have helped their school's science needs, and Title, title I schools can't. And yet, in 2016, Hamilton Middle School PTA, probably mostly white parents, instead of having a science fair, paid for all the science teachers to go to a science conference where they all went to amplify training sessions. So I ask you, does that fall into the good PTA category or the bad PTA category? It's interesting that PTAs get shamed when it's really the district's fault that every single science classroom is not fully equipped. Uh, I believe the um, Amplify adoption has been mishandled. How many stories have you been told about how Amplify came through on the waivers? Three. Three is too many and it's unacceptable. Amplify's own proposal for adoption says in part, over the past two years, Seattle and Amplify have built a strong alignment across teams and support to promote adoption and continuity. So I guess the district's been working with Amplify to promote that adoption because that's exactly what Amplify says. As well, Amplify did not score the highest in the K-5 section. The rubric in the bar is the one that shows that HR, uh, HMA scored higher. So I'm thinking directors Burke and Pinkham know how to do math, did the math, and since the committee gave them no explanation as to why they picked Amplify over HMH. Thank you. Seed my time. Hi, my name is Naho Malamayo. I am a junior at Franklin High School. I was a member of uh, the high school adoption team. I think the process was very organized, and I am proud of the uh, proud of our conclusions. As a student member of the team, my voice was respected and honored. I was also one of the four case study students uh, when I was in biology. We, uh, we used carbon times and I was selected to give my input regularly during the year. I believe the researchers took my ideas seriously and cared about my learning. I did all of this because I think that everyone should have the opportunity to learn science and this new curriculum is more inclusive to all students than the old one. I think that starting with a phenomenon that we figure out and talk, talk about our ideas with our peers is very important to learn I also am here to represent my brother, who is five years old and starting to get interested in science. I think he should feel like he can do and he can do and learn science. 
that he has a choice to be a scientist if he wants to. The way he learned science is very important because part of the things that shaped his future happen in school. In biology class, I was lucky enough to be in science classes where I have learned a lot of things that apply to my life outside of class and solved problems, saw myself as a scientist, believed that I could do science too. And I want this for my little brother, my friends, and the students in Seattle Public School System. I am urging you to choose a curriculum that is aligned to, the, to a phenomenon storyline, end storyline, a curriculum that teaches kids uh, in a new way how to learn science. Uh, I know the K-5 alignment team worked as hard as the high school team to find the best curriculum. I hope you honor the work of all adoption committees. Thank you. My name is Lisa Bovang, and I'm here to give an elementary science historical perspective. I have been involved in elementary science both in, in the classroom and at the district level for 27 years. I have seen lots of changes over that 27 years. Some 20 plus years ago, we had an elementary science curriculum adoption. I was on that team. Along with this came a large NSF grant. At this point, we had cutting edge curriculum. We had eight full-time science curriculum specialists. Science teaching was equitable across all elementary schools. Times and, st and standards do change, however. Although this curriculum was very hands-on, it had several missing components. We as a team added a science writing component, as component assessments up and upgraded the curriculum to meet state standards. More changes happened. The NGSS began and then were fully adopted in 2013. Our curriculum does not match these new standards, as you know. We tried several, several curricular ideas to try to accommodate this. For example, PSEP, which is Partnership for Science and Engineering pra Practices, an alignment team, in addition, an alignment team was formed, and we partnered with UW to launch some new curriculum that met the standards. Although some great curriculum and ideas resulted from these moves, this was not equitable because not all teachers had access to these materials. A lot of excitement came when, with the news that we were getting a new science adoption. An adoption team, team was chosen, research and evaluation took place, and in the end, three different curricula were, were field tested. After many hours of hard work, a recommendation to adopt Amplify Science was made. I have had the opportunity to teach some of these units and was very pleased about that decision. Equity for all students is important. We owe it to all of our students to teach the highest quality curriculum available. I feel, feel it is critical to move forward with the Adoption Committee's recommendation for Amplify Science. Thank you. Jen Fox. After Jen Fox, we will have Rosalind Shea, followed by Rosemary Arneson, and then Yolanda Jones. Hi, my name is Jen Fox. Um, in my 19 years of te teaching in Seattle Public Schools, I've gained a unique perspective of all the science teaching in our district. I've taught biology at Roosevelt High School. I've served as a, as a high school science coach, and I currently teach biology in the HCC program at Hamilton Middle School. I served on three high school science adoption committees. I participated in 2001 for biology, 2010 for chemistry, physics, and physical science, and the current adoption. The latest process was by far the most comprehensive and thorough process I've participated in. I urge you to support the adoption as our high school curriculum is outdated and is not aligned with the next generation science standards. New curriculum is ur urgently needed to attend to these standards and bring a consistent science experience for all students in Seattle Public Schools. In 2010, science teachers from across the district rallied to support the science adoption. We were excited about the prospects of materials and resources. Teacher looked for, teachers looked forward to the professional development that, which accompanied the adoption to collaborate and share student learning. Unfortunately, the adoption was not passed due to budget constraints, so we had to keep our old materials. At this time, I saw how the failed adoption affected schools in every part of our city. The outcome fractured our science teaching community and left us with no resources and no professional time. Many teachers who were at the table in 2010 have been reluctant to come back to do this work because they felt so let down by the process. When teachers do come and collaborate, they strengthen their understanding to meet the needs of all learners. If we fail teachers and learners again, I'm afraid we will never have a full team of high school science teachers to do this important work again. Teachers will always work hard. 
to get the job done. But having no curriculum just really makes our jobs a lot harder. Some schools have purchased materials with the collection of, uh, collection of science fees and funding from PTSA, while other schools were left with nothing. This led each school to interpret the standards themselves, and the students' experience is vastly different in every school across our district. This is not fair to our teachers or students. Please adopt materials today. I cede my spot. Hi, my name is Teresa Alsept, and I teach science at Exi Middle School, and I'm speaking today against the adoption of Amplify. Two years ago, when we were told about the waiver, our science department at Exine decided unanimously not to be part of the pilot for Amplify. We did so for the following reasons. After listening to the Amplify rep, checking online resources, we decided there was just too much computer time and not enough hands-on lab time for middle school students. We thought the students would spend too much time reading or watching simulations about science instead of actually doing science. Also, because it was not a board-supported adoption, the department felt we would be taking too big of a risk with our students. Since that time, our department has learned much about Amplify that tells us that we made the right decision. There are very few experiences for students to be scientists, solve problems, and collect data themselves, which means that students' discussions are not about what they saw, but what someone else saw. We also have seen the formal assessments are very weak. The pre and post tests are the same. There is very little higher level synthesis or application questions. Also, the assessments themselves cannot be modified by the teacher, which adversely affects all our special ed students, ELL students, and the students most at risk. The lesson structure of Amplify is very repetitive, with simulations being revisited too often, which makes it which is what makes it so boring for students. The curriculum might be good for teaching literacy skills, however, it is not a good curriculum for teaching middle school science skills and science to all our students. Finally, I would like to say that I am not against changing curriculum, as some have implied. From what I have seen, the TCI curriculum seems very good, and I would be happy to see it adopted. I am simply against the adoption of Amplify, because I think it's a poor choice for middle school students. Thank you. I would like to cede my time to Sophia and Ruth. Hi, my name is Sophia Martinez and I'm from Jane Adams Middle School. I would like to talk about Amplify and how it benefits us. Can you pull Ampli the mic closer to you, please? Thank you. The Sims help us engage with others. And the difference between using Sims instead of textbooks is it engages us. We only use computers about once every week or two weeks. We do activities where we go outside and we get out of our seats and we learn. Also, in one of our Units, we got to go outside and play roles of things like prevailing winds and ocean and water. We have a lot of class discussions to present our thoughts. Amplify is so important and kids like it. I, I think sc school isn't just about learning, but showing learning can be fun and pushing us to want to learn because we will learn so much, if we, so much more if we want to learn. Without Amplify, be I believe class will be less engaging. Amplify is so important to us. Amplify is so much more than just being on a computer. And even the small time we are, we're very engaged and mostly discuss things that matter. Hi, my name is Ruth, and I'm here. I'm happy to be able to tell you how much Amplify has helped me grow as a scientist and how much I enjoyed it. Amplify changes science class to a hands-on activity, which interests us, which interests uh, interests us to want to learn, which I believe helps us learn even more. My, fav my favorite time was when we got to go outside and act like molecules. It gave me a new perspective of how molecules worked. Science is what motivates me to come to school every day and give it my best. Um, <laughs> thank you for listening to my ideas. After Yolanda Jones, we will have Brian Bushwitz, followed by Emily Bramwell Churkin, and then Robert Fermanio. Hello, 
My name is Yolanda Jones. I am a second year teacher in Seattle Public Schools, and I also had the privilege to be part of the high school adoption committee for science curriculum. Um, I'd like to take a moment to recognize a number of the voices that we will not hear today um, because so many of us want to talk about science adoption, um, that want to acknowledge white supremacy in this community, in this district, because that is why I am here when I think about science. Um, Director DeWolf uh, spoke at a study session a few weeks ago and said that teaching old curriculum could be construed as racist. And I'd like to add that teaching old curriculum that is wrapped in new cellophane could also be construed as racist. The question comes to, are we actually serving our students? If you listen to the voices of the students, you listen to the voices of the teachers that have come up here that are in the field tests, it's pretty clear how students and how teachers are feeling about Amplify. Um, I'm getting excited hearing that that's an experience that students are going to have before they come to my high school classroom because they will be prepared to have storyline-driven, phenomena-driven science. That's what NGSS is. And if curriculum isn't NGSS, sorry, if curriculum isn't phenomena driven, then it isn't going to be standards aligned. We need to have a curriculum like Amplify that is standards aligned to make sure that we are preparing kids, our youngest learners, starting at five years old, so that when I get them nine years later, 11 years later, when I'm talking about a phenomena, I'm talking about a storyline they know what I'm talking about, and we can get to diving in to science. Thank you for your time. Please adopt Amplify. Hello, my name is uh, Dr. Brian Buckwitz, and I'm here to support the K-12 Science Instructional Materials Adoptions. I'm wearing a few hats tonight. Um, I'm the father of two children at Gatewood Elementary School. I'm a community representative on the High School Instructional Materials Adoption Committee. I have a PhD in molecular and cellular biology, and I'm a biology lecturer. As an instructor myself, I'm especially interested in evidence-based, inclusive teaching strategies that help all students learn. I encourage the school board, I urge the school board, to adopt the recommended instructional materials for K-12. These materials are aligned with standards. This is important not only for testing purposes, but because the standards represent consensus as to which concepts and which skills are most important to learn. Importantly, these materials also use a phenomenon and a storyline to engage students as scientists. So many students come to college thinking that science is about memorizing facts rather than being empowered to ask questions about their world or to apply knowledge to problems. In addition, by adopting these strong materials, you would provide an equitable foundation across the district to support all students. In addition, teachers could build upon that strong foundation. Our adoption committees reviewed the instructional materials in several stages with many eyes on the materials. I especially valued the perspectives of the teachers to hear field test teachers describe how these instructional materials help them to be even better teachers was powerful, was inspiring. Please honor the work of the adoption committees and vote for strong, equitable science instructional materials. Thank you. My name is Emily Cherkin. I'm a former Seattle Public School student myself and a former and incoming Seattle Public School parent. I am strongly opposed to the adoption of the Amplify Science curriculum in public schools for two very specific reasons. First, real learning occurs during messy, three-dimensional, hands-on experiences in the context of real-life relationships. Real learning is difficult and carves new neural pathways in growing children. Real learning does not come from remotely monitored, bite-sized, screen-based lessons. Curricula like Amplify will do our children a tremendous disservice and rob them of critical skill building and relationship honing opportunities, skills that will matter in the future. Secondly, where is the long-term evidence that technology-based curriculum is more effective than well-trained, well-supported teachers? 
To quote one committee member, we want students to be engaged in conversations around evidence and using evidence to draw their conclusions. We have decades of research about the value of relationships between students and human teachers, the foundation on which all other learning occurs. If scant evidence exists to justify a nine-year, nearly $9 million tech-based curriculum, where is the justification to implement? Mm -hmm. I am hard-pressed to see how Amplify Science will benefit all students when minimal research exists to suggest that it can. To improve equity in student experience, put $9 million towards hiring more teachers, supporting those teachers, decreasing class sizes, and finding a quality science curriculum that uses real hands-on experiences. This seems a vastly better use of resources than a high-risk roll of the dice on an educational screen-based tool that benefits few beyond those in the industry who seek to profit off our struggling students. I urge you, do not outsource the teaching of science to a bunch of screens. Thank you. After Robert Fermano, we will have James Momsen, followed by Dr. Katrina Reardon, and then Patricia Bailey. Hopefully you have this handout in front of you. My name is Robert Fermiano, a former Seattle school teacher of 30 years. I have two concerns. Number one, is the district in financial debt to Amplify Corporation? And number two, has the partnership between Amplify and Seattle schools impacted the selection of Amplify Science? Senior staff have admitted the vendor Amplify gave the district free goods, but was everything really free? Exhibit A is a list of purchase orders to Amplify, including costs, but notice the invoice column says zero dollars and, quote, still to be invoiced since 2015. Does that mean the district is on the hook for over $400,000 in these orders? Where is the agreement saying the pilot costs were free? Notice at the bottom of the exhibit it says 9,000 subscriptions were purchased August 2018 for a little over $50,000. Two points, A, the board had been previously told that all subscriptions were paid for by Amplify. So which is true? And B, this vendor request falls squarely during the Amplify period, which would seem to be a conflict with RCW competitive bid rules. Notice in the February 2018 that 37 units of first grade physical science were ordered for a penny each. Exhibit B shows the true cost is $1,200, making the total over $44,000. Exhibit C from Amplify shows that, quote, they worked in concert with the district, unquote, citing, quote, SPS leadership provided key insight and feedback on future Amplify products and curriculum redesign. It says their goal all along was to offer, quote, support to promote adoption. In short, it seems the district helped Amplify develop their product, who then apparently either gifted or loaned it the pilots back to us with plans for an inside track on the adoption. I ask you to delay until the questions are answered. Thank you. Next up, we have Dr. Katerina, Katrina Reardon. After that, we will have Patricia Bailey and then Dominga Mendoza. My name is Dr. Katrina Reardon. I work at Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center. And I'm a resident of West, West Seattle, where I'm raising my sons. I cede my time to Heather. My name is Heather, and I've taught second and third grades in Seattle Public Schools for over 20 years. Why do we have adoption committees? To make the best choices for kids through a collaborative process that is informed from data. I am frustrated that a few individuals can completely disregard this work, our dedication, and expertise. There have been two other recent adoptions with very different outcomes. For math, the recommendation of the adoption committee was not honored. HMH, math and focus, was adopted. It is not at all aligned with Common Core. Several elementary schools have waivers to use other curriculum and have to pay for it from the building budget. The math department now works on alternate units, pulling resources from other source resources, creating assessments that align with Common Core. I use math and focus less than 20% of the time, which is true across my building. The textbooks gather dust on my shelf. This is clearly not aligned nor equitable. 
The reading and writing adoption committee's recommendation for CCC was honored by the school board. This curriculum is being widely used across our elementary schools. The reading and writing department is concentrating efforts to support the implementation of curriculum through lead teachers, coaches, and professional development. This is very different from what we have experienced around math curriculum. This has been a successful rollout, and it was recommended. The professionals were trusted. I served on the science committee, and I want you to know that this process was thorough, very thoughtful, and took place over the course of many months and hours. It was not based on the table of numbers that is in your amended proposal. It was based on deep, rigorous, and important conversations representing the stakeholders across our district, students, parents, scientists, teachers, and principals. In these deliberations, we shared ideas, challenged each other, and came to a conclusion based on an anonymous vote after listening to all members carefully. I support this recommendation that comes from me and my peers, and I urge you to vote for the Amplify Science recommendation before you. I'm Patricia Bailey, a retired Seattle teacher. It is evident to those watching the unfolding of the science adoption that there are so many underhanded dealings, it's difficult to keep track of them all. We see the gifting of huge sums of money from Amplify Corporation without the required board approval. We see the illegal implementation of pilot programs without the required board approval. We see the hiding of pilot data from board oversight. We even see violations of state law and much more. Because the skullduggery is being exposed, the argument switched to uh, insinuating that board members are engaging in racism if they reject Amplify's science program. Quite the opposite is true. Low-income students were performing much better before the use of this program, as you have seen from data already presented. It is the accuser who is engaging in racism with callous disregard for the achievement and interest of minority students. Race baiting is a groundless accusation of racism to push a different agenda. The individual using such a tactic may apply, appear socially conscious as a facade, but they are cynically using race to manipulate the board to promote a big business venture. Board members should ignore individuals who stoop to such cynicism and who disdainfully dismiss citizen input as noise. This is intolerable in a democracy. Imagine the precedent set if Amplify is adopted, supported by these kinds of tactics. It invites corporate predation on children and representative school boards everywhere. This situation requires a thorough investigation. Thank you for your hard work and oversight. Dominga Mendoza, Jennifer Goldman, hi there, I'm Jennifer Goldman, I teach ELL, Biology, Physics, and Chemistry at Rainier Beach High School. I'm ceding my time to Katie Kressel. All right, here we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katie Carussell, and I have the privilege of teaching eighth grade science at Denny International Middle School. I have a master's in teaching from UW, where I was trained in ambitious science teaching practices that directly align with NGSS. I also proudly call myself a product of Seattle Public Schools. The last time Seattle adopted a science curriculum was when I was in middle school. We need science education for this generation. I believe to do that, we need a science curriculum that allows all students access to science content. Not all students want to learn science, just for science sake. Students become engaged in science when they see how it connects to their lives, to the real world. Amplify provides this opportunity with every unit. It centers its units on current and real world scientific topics while following a storyline. Instead of doing random experiments, students engage in a variety of lessons that allow them to collect evidence they need to ultimately explain the storyline, the phenomenon. I understand that it's a concern that students may be doing less hands-on lessons or spending too much time in front of a computer with Amplify. That's a valid concern, 
But Amplify's curriculum does include labs and hands-on activities, as well as a wide variety of other learning opportunities. Bad teaching back when I was in middle school was our teacher giving us a textbook and telling us to read it for the entire period. Today, bad teaching is sitting students in front of computers all class. Many of our science teachers in Seattle are doing great things with their creative curriculums and partnerships, but we cannot adopt individual teachers. Amplify provides us an opportunity to have a strong collaborative effort around common curriculum, thus supporting every teacher in providing a strong science education for all. Thank you. Christopher Lausted. Good evening. Uh, my name is Christopher Lausted. I am the parent of uh, two students at Ballard High School, and I was a volunteer member of the High School Science Curriculum Adoption Committee. Uh, I work at the Institute for Systems Biology, a research arm of Providence St. Joseph as a research engineer. And uh, one of my great pleasures is working with our high school interns. Uh, we have semester-long and year-long internships every year. And we also host the Logan Center for Education, which is involved in curriculum development, in professional development, and has always been involved in the development adoption of next generation science standards. And now it is imperative that we adopt a NGSS-ready curriculum. So it was very interesting to be involved in, in the board and to meet the the students, the teachers, the parents, the community members, the professors who all contributed, especially the students. You heard some of them tonight. These students are amazing. They spent weekends and evenings inside uh, going through piles and piles of materials, texts, labs, you name it, and uh, look, giving real feedback based on their firsthand experience and telling what really helped them and their friends learn. Now, Old-fashioned curriculum, uh, like I had when I was young, uh, works for a minority of students. Uh, NGSS is designed to help all students. And looking through all the curriculum, most of what we saw is still very old-fashioned with maybe a few pages inserted here or there to pay lip service to NGSS. Fortunately, there was one option, one combination of materials that would be NGSS for physics, chemistry, and biology. It's in the report, please read that all. I strongly urge you to adopt this. Thank you. This concludes public testimony this evening. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you to everyone that came down both to see public testimony in person and those of y'all that prepared your public testimony, spoke your truth from your heart. Thank you ever so much. We go back now to board comments. Who would like to speak next that hasn't spoken as yet? And then we'll circle back around on um, comments. Director Pinkham. <coughs> Tatsuo, and again, Tatsuo, good evening. Uh, thank you to all the uh, <coughs> public testimony tonight. You know, this is, uh, I think, a decision that's going to have to be, you know, I have to take in everyone's input. You know, the, the people here that are supporting it and also the people that have some concerns and questions about it because that does unfortunately raise some questions in my mind as well that I hope will get answered and addressed as we go through this process. So also got to trust the process. And so believe me, if we have questions, you know, hopefully we'll get them addressed and we'll see which way uh, this will fall. Uh, I guess for me, I, when I think about this, I am concerned about access to technology for our low-income students. You know, and so that would be a question I need to ask our committee. You know, how are we going? Is that addressed? And uh, that as students go home, will they be able to get online? Or if they don't have that, what tools are going to be available for them? So those are kind of questions that I have still in my mind. And uh, Hearing some of the people coming up, and it sounds great. Those that have command of the science curriculum on their own seems like they're able to uh, supplement, amplify, but there's still some teachers out there that may be struggling a bit with it, and they're relying maybe a little bit too much on the curriculum and need their expertise. So the professional development training also needs to be in there, but we got to, I feel like I have to make sure we're being fiscally responsible as well when we look at the cost for this. So. 
Uh, I saw some questions and hopefully we'll get them answered as we address them as it's being discussed tonight. And again, I want to thank you for your input as well because that gives me more questions to ask and uh, hopefully we'll get things worked out. Uh, Want to thank uh, first uh, uh, Gabby, who was here earlier, sharing her cons her inputs and views and perspectives of what it's like to be a student at Franklin High School. Uh, the John Rogers Choir that was here earlier for those that weren't here, uh, definitely a treat to hear them sing. And sorry we missed the Teacher Appreciation Week. So again, the teachers that, you, that are here, thank you for all the work that you do and working with our students. Uh, I also wanted to point out that. Uh, the partnerships that we also have out there, um, <coughs> the Seattle Public Schools, or Pub Seattle Public Library was recently working with our Urban Native Clear Sky Youth Council where they had an environmental equity uh, service. So I encourage you to go to the spl.org website, type in the environmental equity series and look at the Clear Sky, what they've been doing in partnership and helping students find their voice uh, through a project oriented uh, project, or project uh, driven learning versus here you got to learn reading here you got to learn science but when they had that project orientation they learned some reading learn some science learn other ways to, you know not just focused on one particular subject they were able to broaden bring in other subjects with that so I appreciate what they've been able to do there um, so excuse me we have a our list of <laughs> presenters are pretty long uh, I wrote down some comments here. Uh, Miles Grant, thank you for your presentation showing how well uh, students can have a voice at a Franklin Town House here, that power, justice, and freedom. Uh, sounds very interesting, and I'll see if I can get out there and uh, see some of your <coughs> student-led events. Um, to do. I do not have any upcoming community meetings, uh, community meetings planned, unfortunately. Uh, I am going to try to join Hello. Director <laughs> President Harris here because she has one uh, this weekend. Uh, so she's joined a couple of mine, so I think I owe her that to be out there for her community meeting. So that's uh, look out for me there if anybody needs to keep in touch uh, or from my district. Uh, also, I don't know if, the, if people heard, I, I will not be running for re-election, so just want to make it finally. I don't, uh, <laughs> <coughs> people have been asking, but uh, just uh, okay. No, okay. No PC. Never mind. Uh, but thank you all, Katia, for being here, and stick around for the discussion that we're going to have on the science adoption. Thank you, Director Mack. Please. Good evening. Um, I remember the first time I came down here to testify and how much time and effort it took to prepare my comments and thoughtfully speak in front of the board on an issue that was incredibly important to me at that time. It was around the boundaries and capacity and here I sit today as a school board director working on the same issues later. Um, I have the utmost respect and appreciation for all of the folks that have been participating in the adoption process over the last few years with um, having a having the state adopt the standards many years ago and us not starting an adoption process then and actually moving towards getting curriculum has been challenging and here we are today with with challenges around that um, I appreciate all of your comments and concerns I think there's a lot of things that have been raised here um, I'm not going to uh, talk more about my perspective uh, we'll be asking questions and having more in-depth discussion around the um, specific bars as they come forward but please know that any questions around process has nothing to do with the complete and utmost respect for the experts in your perspective. I have, I know everyone put so much time and effort into this work and how much you care about it and how much it matters. And we all have the best interest of students at mind. And I, I just really wanna, as, as, as Director Geary expressed, express a lot of gratitude for all of that effort. I also wanna, um, Acknowledge the folks that are in the audience that didn't get a chance to speak because we are so focused on this um, adoption process. Um, uh, I, I, there's a number of topics here that I wish we would have heard from, um, and I'm, I'm disappointed that we don't have enough space to do that. Um, 
the white supremacy in Seattle Public Schools, I'd like to hear more about what we're talking about there. There's a number of folks that were bringing that up and I'm curious to get more information on that. So I encourage you all to send emails. Uh, we do read them even if we don't respond. Um, the Dearborn Park Elementary en enrollment was on the list. Washington Middle School was on the list again. Um, and then curriculum, uh, environmental ethics and climate change, number 46 was is on there, <clears throat> um, which I find personally really interesting. My undergraduate degree was environmental and social system studies. Um, so I'm disappointed that we didn't get a chance to, to hear from these other um, folks and hopefully we can get folks to take the time to send an email and let us know what their concerns are because it does matter and it does impact our thought process. Um, I forgot to mention that um, on June 5th, we're having another work session. This is another hot topic, likely. <laughs> Student assignment plan and boundaries for the 2021 school year. Did I get that right? Yes, not 1920 because we've already settled that. But on June 5th, we'll be having kind of the initial conversation about what uh, potential changes are in line. I think there's, well, I know there's, um, the Licton Springs, Robert Eagle staff, that whole area, um, Wing Luke, and I, um, I can't remember all of the topics off, off the top of my head, so I apologize for that, but that'll be a really helpful um, work session to, to get a sense of what issues are gonna be coming up that we'll be deciding on in the fall. And with that, um, I apologize too, I have not been able to um, set up a community meeting, the last one I held, no one showed up to. <laughs> that might not have been true this this month, but um, unfortunately it's it's difficult to find the time on the weekends, because um, frankly, <clears throat> we spend a lot of time away from our families for this work, and um, I have to preserve that, as I know y'all have families as well, and so you, you might understand that. With that, again, thank you for coming. I look forward to the future conversation. We've got other issues today, and um, that's all I've got. Director Pat, too. Good evening. It is always uh, a great thing to actually to be here and be able to just come and share what uh, communities bring to us and um, just looking forward for the various issues and comments that uh, are brought up and hopefully that as a board director that we can actually be able to look at some of those issues and be able to work it, work it out so that way we can be able to say that progress has been made. Um, and a lot of comments that are actually happening, um, I think that you know we take it very seriously because we're up here to represent all our children in Seattle Public Schools and it's a very important thing that we make the right choices in terms of the education of our students. So thank you for uh, coming tonight and sharing with us uh, your comments and, um, and it's, you know, or complaints. I mean, that's what a board director is supposed to be, to take the good and the bad and hopefully be able to make the best of everything that goes on because my job as a board director is to make sure that your student get the best education that Seattle Public Schools can provide. So it's always a wonderful thing to be here tonight. As I was sitting here, I was thinking, okay, um, and I also that June 26th will be my last day on the board. I'm gonna be stepping down. But at the same time, um, it has been an amazing journey being on the board of Seattle Public Schools because you're actually making choices in terms of the education of all our students in Seattle Public School. So thank you for actually coming in and letting us know your thoughts, supporting us in many ways, and hopefully that we can continue on to do the best that we can to provide our students in Seattle Public School the best education that we can. Thank you. Okay, last but not least. All I want to do is announce that I do hold um, community meetings every Tuesday morning at Soka on Blakely, just north of the U District.
from 8 to 9.30. Um, I post um, them on Facebook, but you should check before you go because if there is a family emergency, then I may not show up. So just before you leave the house, check Facebook to see if the event is still there. If I don't make it, I will post that I won't be there. We've had 10 surgeries in my family over the last month, so who knows, right? So, but I think I'm, I'm good for the next few. Thanks. Okay, last but not least, Director Patu, we are going to miss you something fierce. And we will have an appointment process set up in the next few days in order that it is a transparent appointment process. It is my understanding that the appointment process will mean that we appoint a director until the November 2021 school board election. These are the laws as explained to us by legal counsel and King County records and election. And sometimes the laws are awfully darn inconvenient, but we will have a fair and transparent policy or excuse me, procedure um, to set up Director Patu's successor until that November general election. And I say successor because there is no darn way you're going to replace Betty Patu and all the years that she has given to this district, both this staff and as an elected board member, and I, for one, am going to miss her greatly. Uh, events, we have an opportunity to go to Garfield High School tomorrow night at, I believe, 6 p.m. to talk about the anniversary of the board, uh, Brown v. Board of Education. I saw our esteemed colleague, former board director, Stefan Blanford, in the audience earlier. I don't know whether he's left or not, but he'll be part of a panel. And uh, as well, CC, whose last name I am forgetting, Nathan Hale, high school student, who is doing a documentary on ethnic studies and is going to do great things. We just hope we get to rehire her when she comes back from um, Pacific Lutheran University. You've seen her down here testifying and she's, she's one of our bright stars. And also at Chief South International High School this weekend on Saturday uh, is a Race and Equity Youth and Family Racial Justice Summit, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Uh, it's on Facebook. It's out there quite a bit. Seattle Schools, NAACP Youth Group are helping co-sponsor it. Please get registered so they have a food count. Um, other gatherings of this kind have been profound and powerful, and I cannot encourage you to take even more of your free time from your family to attend. And should you have more free time than that, would like to invite you to um, Casa Latina next week. May 23rd from 6 to 7, where they will be awarding Chief South International High School's Proyecto Savor program that's been in effect for 20 years. And, and I, for one, living up the street from Chief South International High School, have too many siblings that are alumna, and including my daughter is an alumna there, um, that's something to be extraordinarily proud of. If you have additional time, and you like lasagna, you have a 50% chance of getting lasagna this Saturday from 3 to 5 at the Delridge Library. There are those in the audience that have tasted it and can attest that it's worth it. Um, and then on June 20, 2015, blah, 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 June 15, 2019, at the Southwest Library from 3 to 5, a next community meeting, and July 20, 3 to 5, again a Saturday, at the West Seattle Library. They're thoughtful discussions. We welcome you, and it sounds like I'm going to have at least one other 
uh, board director attending, and my hope is staff will attend as well. Um, we, we have a couple of other announcements to make, but I think they're more appropriately put into the uh, science adoption intro item, which now will bring us to feedback on any topics not science adoption that we heard testimony from, from other board members. Seeing none, then we move to action items. There were three things taken off of the uh, consent agenda. The minutes were taken off the consent agenda for the April 24th uh, partnership work session. And give me a moment while I bring up, while I bring up my corrections on one paragraph where we asked about professional development for since time immemorial, the statutorily required curriculum to be taught in our schools, and asked whether or not it was true that the star mentor teachers and the Seattle residency teachers had not taken advantage of professional development for STI. Uh, Gail Morris, manager of Native uh, Education, suggested yes, in fact, that was true, but efforts were being made, and I believe that I've sent out the um, corrections. Mr. Boy, acting chief counsel, will those corrections do it? Can we use that as Scrivener's? Ronald Boy, um, I believe it would be best if we read those into the record. Would you like me to I have to, to find them in my emails. My computer is not working. I know. We've been Technical in and out. Technical challenges. And I had them up on mine, and uh, the Wi-Fi dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on then to um, number five from the consent agenda. And let's uh, bring up a motion on number five. And that's the amendment to board policy 2024, online learning, repeal of board policy number C16.00, acceptance of correspondence or college courses for high school credit. Came before CNI April 23rd for approval. Motion, please. I move that the school board amend policy number 2024 online learning as attached to the board action report and that the school board repeal board policy number C16.00 acceptance of correspondence or college courses for high school credit also attached to the board action report. If the motion is approved, the changes would be effective starting the summer term of the 2018-19 school year. Second that motion, please. Second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Director Geary, did you want to lead off on this? We've had some email traffic about clarifications. Yes. Um, so, a couple things. One, this was passed through for approval, and I am not, um, at this point, <coughs> suggesting to my colleagues that we shouldn't approve this. This particular policy I've had, we've had some email correspondence, and I did have somebody come visit me. Um, and it isn't the policy in and of itself that um, appears to have any, that I have concerns about. It is the superintendent procedure that is attached to the policy. We as a board don't necessarily, we don't approve the superintendent procedure, but in an act of transparency, it was included. So for us to, I feel, to have gone and just voted on it on consent without further discussion about that distinction would have left people feeling unheard with regard to their comments about some potential problems in terms of the language in the procedure as it may apply to special education families and their entitlement to a free appropriate public education. Um, we've discussed that it's my understanding, and it has been, we are, and it is my understanding that the district is willing to engage in further discussion around the superintendent procedure to make sure that the change in language that have happened um, can be vetted against some 
specific scenarios so we can make sure that we're not having any unintended consequences. Uh, the purpose of the policy change and the superintendent procedure fundamentally was twofold. And one was around consistency in its application across our district. This is important under our new strategic plan because we want to make sure that our operations are consistent for our families. And so that was part of what, what brought about this. Um, and to make sure that there, we are not inadvertently creating opportunity gaps by allowing certain communities to act one way under the procedure and other communities to act another way. So I just highlight that in approving this policy, there may and should probably still be some scrutiny in terms of the procedure. Did you want to add anything, um, Chief Tabacker? And Diane Tabacker, Chief Academic Officer, and you no, know, Director Geary, you said it very um, eloquently. Um, we believe that the policy is ready to go forward. The procedure, we need to make a minor change to that, but um, that is why we actually wrote some language into the procedure to take care of situations exactly like the ones that were surfaced in the last couple of days. And then we had some questions. Do you want to ask your question? Oh, around. Um, I have other questions, but yeah. Oh, okay. So 1599, um, the new law that came forward, you <coughs> looked at that and determined whether or not it would impact the policy? We do not believe that 1599 impacts this policy. It does impact the next one that you will be discussing, but not this one directly. Thank you. <coughs> Director Hi. Mack, comments, <coughs> questions, concerns? First, gratitude for all the work that has gone into this and the responsiveness. A um, couple kind of technical things that I just noticed, and I appreciate that Director Geary um, kind of uh, discovered the, the procedure issue and that that's been publicly um, corrected. The question that when I was reading through the bar, um, it says that says something about the fiscal impact of running start um, that because the limit of four credits, it's going to actually cause fewer students to take running start. But in the policy, it specifically calls out that running start doesn't count in this count. So I'm, so I, I, because there's so much, there's kind of confusion around like there's four credit limits but what, what are we talking about when we're limiting that? And it explicitly states in the policy that running start is excluded from that, that that's part of our district program, so you can have more than four credits in running start. It's not gonna be limited by that four, correct? Correct. correct. Thank you. I just, I just wanna kinda publicly clarify that because the bar has a fiscal statement saying something about running start, which I think is probably something that got a little confused there. I don't think it, it I just want to, it's important that folks understand that, that Running Start doesn't have a four credit limitation. Um, the other thing I just kind of caught is that the policy title is no longer online learning. Um, the policy title is out of district credits and credit recovery. Um, in the previous policy, it did have some statements around our, um, values, there was a statement around value of not having too many online courses, something around that. I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was a statement in there. That statement is no longer in this policy because this policy is actually more globally focused around out of district credits and credit recovery. Um, and um, my question about the title change is that the motion, and maybe this is not for, um, Ms. DeBacker, but for Mr. Boy, the, the motion language uh, says online learning, but the new title is actually out of district credits and credit recovery. I'm just, from a technical standpoint, I wanna make sure that the title of the policy is actually correct in the motion. Okay. Uh, Ronald Boy, I'm looking at the recommended motion right now and it indicates, I move that the school board amend uh, board policy uh, 2024 online learning. 
as attached to the school board action report. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't, I mean, and is it appropriate to actually have the motion read and change the title to? I, I feel like for clarity, because the, the actual, the motion to amend that policy, that is correct, because that's right. the correct language. Um, and I believe it might be appropriate if we amended the motion to include um, just language that the new policy will be titled as attached policy 2024 with the new the new language so we could Thank add you. something if you wanted to make a motion to amend the motion a motion to amend uh, that we just had some language on just to be perfectly transparent the new policy 2024 will be titled out of district credits and recovery can I um can I make that motion to amend? And can I ask you to be the one to read that statement properly into the record of the motion? Yes, and I believe or that- do I have to do something else? If you could let the other conversation come to a pause mm. and then go back and pick that up so that you can get the value of your colleagues' input prior to making an amendment. Oh. Much appreciate. Certainly. Okay. Was that the only issue you had here, or did you have other issues that you wanted to continue on? I, d I don't want to break up the. No, I appreciate. No, that was actually the that was the, the other the other question around the four credit limit was answered, um, and then and running start, and then the online learning and the title change was my only other question, and then um, Director Geary talked about the fifteen ninety nine aspect. So yeah, I okay. don't have any further questions. It's, other it's questions, really comments, right concerns. We'll circle back around. Director Burke. I want to thank my colleagues for their attention on this and, and the, the other similarly numbered policy that I constantly confuse as well. And then just around the naming, I don't know if it's a, if, if it would be appropriate to call it a Scrivener's thing to, to amend, um, move the school board, amend and rename board policy, blah, blah, blah. Or if you actually have to state the name. I see acting chief counsel shaking his head up and down that I, I think that's that a great works solution. for him. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now uh, my question, folks, is so we're going to clarify the procedure. How do we get at that out there in a transparent fashion? The procedures have caused us some trouble in the past, and, and we're looking to learn from our past. And how do, we, how do we get that out there so that everybody feels comfortable that we are, in fact, being transparent? Should potentially it come back through CNI committee? It would just as a report, as just as as a a report, report with an attachment. Would that work for you all? I see consensus. Okay, so we've got a Scrivener's error. Um, let's do a roll call on the motion as amended with the Scrivener's error to the title. Amend and rename. Roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director Geary? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion as amended has passed unanimously. Okay, number six from the consent calendar, amending board policy number 2420, high school grade and credit marking policy came before CNI December 11th for approval. Motion, please. I, I move that the school board amend policy number 2420, high school grade and credit marking policy as attached to the board action report. Second the motion. Motion. Are you going to say it or are you going to sing it? We should make her sing it. Okay. Questions, comments, concerns from my colleagues? Director Mack, you removed it from the consent calendar. Please tell us why. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I don't have any opposition to the current changes that are being made, and I understand that um, 
there's been a lot of work going into them. I just wanted to daylight the fact that uh, the legislature just recently passed 1599, which is likely to impact this policy and a lot of other things that we have going on. So that this policy might come back in the not so distant future again. And so I just, I, I wanted to invite staff to kind of daylight that for the public and clarify what those changes might be. Um, yes, Diane DeBacker, Chief Academic Officer. Um, you are correct in the passage of House Bill 1599 and the governor signing it just last week. It will impact this policy. Um, we are still receiving guidance from OSPI, but we do know that it will be impacted. Um, just to remind you, this particular policy has been sitting to the side for several months as we finished up 2024. So the only thing that has changed with this is the passage of House Bill 1599. So we will be addressing that as we receive more guidance. It will impact it. Okay. Roll call, please. Dr. Geary? Aye. Dr. Mack? Aye. Dr. Burke? Aye. Dr. Patu? Aye. Dr. Pinkham? Aye. Dr. Harris? Aye. This motion is passed unanimously. Okay, and let's go back to amending and correcting the minutes. Acting Chief Boy, will you help me out here? I think I found it on my phone. At page four, paragraph four, I'd like to amend the first sentence that reads, in part of the second sentence, Director Harris ask about since time immemorial and training for star mentor teachers. Ms. Morris reported star teachers have not yet been trained in since time immemorial, period. The substitute language then, and I sent this earlier this afternoon, and encourage everybody if they want staff's assistance, and if you spot something, heads up, get it out there. Director Harris asks Native Programs Manager Gail Morris whether it was true that star mentor teachers and Seattle Teachers Residency, STR teachers, had not taken this since time immemorial professional development question. Ms. Morris reported star mentor and Seattle Teachers Residency teachers had not taken the offered professional development period. So I make a motion to amend and correct the minutes as follows. Do I have a mo uh, second? second? Awkward, making my own motions. It's all good. <laughs> I, I, I read it on email, I second that. Okay. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues? Seeing none, roll call please. Director Burke? Aye. Director Geary? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Since I was not there, I'll abstain. Director Harris? Aye. This motion has passed with a vote of five to zero to one. Okay. C number one, approval of annual highly capable program plan. Came before CNI April 23rd for approval. Approval. Motion, please. I move that the board approve the highly capable program plan as attached to the board action report for submission to OSPI for school year 2018-19 to support highly capable services and the district's gifted eligibility identification process and that the school board authorize the superintendent to apply for the allocation of funds from OSPI. I second the motion. Comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues that may not have been brought up with a thorough um, conversation during introduction. I'll make a comment. This is the first time I think that I have indicated that I will vote in favor of same. And it is my pleasure to do so because I think we've made some progress in how we report and how we communicate. Other comments, questions, concerns? Saying none, roll call please. I see Acting Chief Boy at the podium, that's not necessarily good news. So just to be clear, it appears that we approved the amended minutes, but we didn't actually approve the, the amendment to the minutes by vote. So Busted. I, so I Busted. Think, so I think we Okay, just to so get can back. we approve the minutes as amended? We did the amendment. Just 
Let's fix it while we can, please. Thank you. <laughs> motion to approve. Can, can so we do we a just, motion while we're in a motion? So we we'll just want to be clear. Was, are we're, you, are, did you feel like you approved the, the, um, the changes? Yes. Okay, so then we need to approve So the, then we need to okay. approve the full body of the document as amended. I skipped a step. I was sure. so excited. So should we call the vote on the motion that is active and then return to that one? I'd like to get the other vote done now. Please, as, as thank you, you. Chair's prerogative. So, I don't want to step in it twice in a row here, yep. okay? So that essentially looks like I Can move approval appro of the minutes from the April 24th, 2019 oversight work session and the May 1st, 2019 regular board meeting as amended. Second. All those in favor, please sing, excuse me, roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director Geary? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Batu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Abstain. Director Harris? Aye. Okay, now we go back to the roll call vote for C1, approval of annual highly capable programs plan. Director. Having seen no comments, questions, concerns from my colleagues. Roll call, please. Director Burke? Aye. Director Geary? Aye. Director Mack? Aye. Director Patu? Aye. Director Pinkham? Aye. Director Harris? Aye. This motion is passed unanimously. Yeah, let's, um, let's take 15 minutes to stretch, and I would suggest to the folks that are in the audience, this will be posted on YouTube in the morning, and we've taken our public comment so you can get home to your families and, um, and or watch the latter part of this if you're interested given all your all's investment in this process and you can have a meal while you watch. 15 minutes, we're in recess.